Now we've disassembled our tuba, we've cleaned all the valves, we want to have a look at the casings also, be sure that they have been cleaned properly. We'll take first just a cloth and wipe them clean. If we're noticing white deposits inside the valves, then we can use a substance such as Brasso to clean inside there. Take it on a rag and wipe it out very carefully. Be careful not to get the Brasso on the lacquer as it does damage lacquer. Also when using Brasso, it'll have to be rinsed thoroughly inside the casing. So with a clean cloth, you may want to use lighter fluid to dissipate the Brasso and then follow with yet another cloth rinsed in water to wipe any residue out. In the case of the top post opening on the valve casing, we may want to use a pipe cleaner which will get in there very well for cleaning those surfaces and use all the same applicants. Now as the case with the disassembly, we're going to talk through our reassembly and then show you in the subjective view how it's actually done with pause screens where appropriate. What we will be doing is first to take the valve and the back bearing, inspect it and oil it appropriately. Then we will insert it into the valve casing and hammer it into position after it's properly aligned. After the valve has been hammered into place, we will then apply the back cap finger firmly. Then we will roll the tuba over to the other side and apply the stopper arm. That will be put into place with a sharp blow from our mallet with the wood dowel again. After that has been done, we'll replace the stopper arm retaining screw and then we'll reconnect the linkage. You'll notice I'm sitting for all this procedure. This is really the best place for doing this. We keep all of our parts close so that if, in the event that we happen to, they happen to slip out of our fingers, we can easily control them. And also, as we will be doing some hammering, the cushion afforded by our legs helps protect the front side of our instrument. So now let's go to a subjective view and go through the reassembly of our valves. Okay, now we're gonna to begin to reassemble our tuba. First thing we'll do is take our valve, and you'll notice I'm holding it once again in the C's of the valve. This is clean. Of course, the first thing now we're going to want to do is to oil the valve. Again, now you can see very clearly the post, the bottom post, and the back bearing, or bottom bearing. Now with our oiler, we're going to take one drop of oil, put it on this post, and then let it flow down the post, creating a trail to the bearing surface. This will work very much as you've probably seen water on your car windshield. When it rains a little, it forms paths. And then as the water dries and more water comes on, it follows the same old trail. Well, while the horn is assembled, this trail that we have created is going to allow the oil a path to find the bottom bearing plate. Now we'll take the bottom bearing plate, put it on, and give it a spin. Just be sure that it moves freely. Okay. Now we'll roll the valve over, still holding it in the C's. And on the top post, repeat the procedure with a single drop of oil and let it create its path. Now we're going to insert this into the valve casing and align it. Now in order that you can see the alignment procedure clearly, we're going to do this in a valve which is not in the tuba but instead we have it loaded in the vise so you can see the critical portions of this. Okay, now we have our valve out of the instrument again in the vise to have a look at this back bearing alignment. You'll notice that here on the casing there has been a notch put on by the manufacturer and a similar notch on the back bearing plate here. When we place these on we want these notches to line up exactly before we hammer the valve then back into position. Here I'll just anchor it. Also now that we have the valve in this position, we noted earlier with bumper placement that you'll see that again there is a notch on this back bearing surface that lines up with a notch in the back post. When the valve is turned one direction these should line up perfectly. When it's turned the opposite direction they should again line up perfectly. This is our check to be sure that the bumpers are aligning properly and the valve inside the unit is working properly. So always consult this when you're reassembling the instrument and always check it after you've replaced a set of bumpers. Now let's go back to our instrument and reassembly. Now that we have the valve plate properly aligned with our wooden dowel and our mallet, Again, check the alignment one last time. Be sure it does not slip out of place. We're going to take the, the wooden dowel, place it on the back bearing, 
plate and then hammer the valve back into place. This may take some force. You want to be sure to hammer the back bearing plate back on firmly and levelly. That's why we use a round dowel with a hole in it so we apply pressure firmly and evenly. Okay, now we will replace the bottom cap which we have already placed grease in the threads as we previously talked about as a trick to keep it from becoming stuck. And we will put this on finger firm, not so tight that it creates difficulties removing it. Now don't worry at this point if the valve does not move. We'll show you in the next procedure when this is freed. Now we will repeat these procedures for all the remaining valves in our instrument before we turn the horn over. Okay, now we have replaced all of our valves. We've turned the tuba over and then for clarity we've inserted a colored card again. The next portion of our reassembly is going to be to replace the stopper arms. Now also as long as you're at this stage you'll of course take the time to check the bumpers and be sure they're in good condition. If they show any sign of wear of course this is the time to replace them as the stopper arm is out of the way. If you have questions about replacing these consult the earlier portion of the video. Now to replace the stopper arm we'll just sit it over the post. Now don't be concerned if some of these valves are stuck before you have replaced the stopper arm. The procedure on a new valve which will free it then is to anchor the stopper arm. We're going to take our wooden dowel, place it over the stopper arm, then with our mallet give it one sharp brisk tap. This should have freed the valve and anchored the stopper arm so that it no longer is free from the post. Now do not become concerned that the back caps are stuck. The anchoring of the stopper arm has caused these to stick and if you'll notice in our disassembly procedure we talked about how to remove a stuck back cap. Now we are ready to replace the stopper arm retaining screw. This screw is cosmetic only. It doesn't actually bear any weight so we are not going to want to tighten it excessively. Simply tight enough that it does not cause any buzzing noises or will not work freely will be quite enough. So do not torque this screw down too tightly. Finally we will reconnect the linkage. In the case of the uniball here is the time to check to be sure that this ball spins freely. It should rotate in every direction inside its socket. Also, we have already added a drop of oil. We always want to add a drop of oil at reassembly. Insert the screw through the hole of the uniball, then reattach it to our stopper arm. This screw we will want to tighten securely. The tension on this screw should actually freeze the center ball of the uniball in position so that the outside will pivot around the frozen steel ball in the center. Now at this point the valve is completely reassembled. We will just want to repeat this procedure for all remaining valves and we're ready to go.